Hello everyone and welcome to morning coffee break. I noticed on the uh, on the calendar, at least the one on my phone, it says uh, Easter Monday. So I guess that's not this Monday after Easter is known as Easter Monday. So it seems kind of logical. Okay, so um, it's Monday, April 1st. Is that April Fool's Day? Not, or is, I didn't see that. Maybe it is. I know there's April Fool's Day Monday. I thought it was on the 1st. I'm not sure about that, though. Anyway, uh, today, okay, currently it is 62 degrees. High today is 75, and it was that high yesterday, too. Man, uh, it's early to be that warm. Uh, so maybe it's going to be a really warm summer. Uh, chance of uh, rain, 20%. Winds at 8 mile per hour. Today there will be a... Can't wait to plant my 2024 garden video um, slideshow of uh, gardening pictures. You know, I got a million of them. Uh, okay, and uh, today, what's for dinner? Uh, got that Boston, but I need to get it in the uh, crock pot because it'll take a while to cook. It's pretty big. Um, so we're gonna have I'm gonna make barbecue out of it, and we're gonna have barbecue sandwiches, slaw, and uh, we don't have any fries left. But I thought we could have some of those oven they're called oven crisp or something like that. They're um, they're like potato chips, yeah, and they're really good. Uh, they really are. I think we'll have those with it. That'd be good to go with us. A nice barbecue sandwich, uh, and I'm sure I'll have plenty left over to freeze for other meals. I'm hoping to have at least enough for two more meals after uh, what we have tonight. Okay, um, I've got a taste test, a morning coffee break taste test. And I think it was YC told me how, from YC Cooks and Bakes, uh, she told me how to pronounce this word, and I've already forgotten what she said. I forgot what she said, YC. Um, it's C-H-O-C-E-U-R. I was calling it something like Chakur or something like it, but that, that it's pronounced differently, and I can't remember how it was. So <laughs> it's from Aldi, and it's a coconut macaroon filled Belgian milk chocolate bar, I guess you'd say. I've never had, they had another flavor too. I can't remember what it was. Maybe I'll have to get it next time or something. This says Rainforest Alliance, People and Nature. I guess the cocoa. And, okay, yeah, it says by buying Rainforest Alliance certified cocoa, Aldi, Aldi U.S. supports more sustainable cocoa farming. That's nice. Okay, let's see. Nutrition facts. I don't expect this to be great for you, but I don't eat these. I've never had one, but I probably, I don't know, I might get one again sometime. We keep a little bit of chocolate. I wish it was dark chocolate. But anyway, if you eat the whole bar, uh, it's 270 calories, 21% total fat, 50% saturated fat, no trans fat, 2% cholesterol, 2% sodium, 11% carbs, 4% fiber, uh, 50% sugars, protein 3 grams, uh, calcium 6%, iron 6%, and potassium 2%. So, you know, it's just something I wouldn't have very often if I, you know, I, I won't have. But we do usually get a dark chocolate bar. They're a little bit better for you. Uh, dark chocolate is. Okay, let's see what it looks like. It's in little bars. Wow, it melts easy. Milk chocolate. I don't know if you can tell, it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a filling. 
in it. You can tell the difference. Mmm. I love coconut, especially with chocolate. Like um this kind of tastes like a um Mounds bar. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Mm. Oh my goodness. It's delicious. If you like like coconut, you're gonna love it. If you like mounds bars, you're gonna love it. I think it's the mounds bar that's like dark chocolate. One of them's dark, and I think the almond joy is like milk chocolate. This is fabulous. And you barely touch it and it, it melts, so. Mm-hmm. I think this was around, I've had it for a little while. I think this was around $2. Mm. That was really, really, really good. Um, nutrition facts, facts, um, I mean, it's got a lot of, uh, what was it, 50% of sugars, 11% um, of carbs. And um, chocolate always has fat, especially saturated fat. That's 50%. I'm just going to give this like a two and a half. Two and a half out of five for nutrition facts. It's not something I would eat every day. Just like a treat, you know. That's probably all. I'll probably let them have some of it. And that's probably about all I'll get. But I like it. Well, like I said, it would be like a treat for something every now and then. Um, the taste is wonderful. I'd give it a 5 out of 5. It tastes like a Mounds Bar. It is really good. And you, you can taste the coconut, but there's you can't really tell there's pieces of it, you know, like you could from the texture. There's not really pieces of it. Okay. Back to the jokes. And here's a couple, I guess, leftover Halloween. I mean, Halloween. <laughs> Easter uh, jokes. Boy one, how did you get that bruise on your arm? Boy two, I ate some Easter candy. Boy one, eating Easter candy won't give you a bruise. Boy two, it will if your big brother's if it's your big brother's candy. <laughs> Wife, what are your plans for Easter? Husband, same as Jesus. Wife, what do you mean? Husband, I will disappear on Friday and reappear on Monday. Wife, awesome. You do that. I'll do a Mary and show up pregnant and untouched by my husband. <laughs> the man stayed home. <laughs> Thought of the day is from Elbert Hubbard. God will not look you over for medals, degrees, or diplomas, but for scars. Okay. Well, where I had a trivia time. I was looking at it um, a minute ago. Where was it at? Is it maybe is this going to sound interesting? It's um, it doesn't say. I need to go to the. Well, it doesn't. I don't know. Some of these games are different than others. You know the way they do them. But it says this. It'll probably make me go to the site anyway. The spinning Jenny was a machine used to spin what? Water, clay, cotton candy, thread. Hmm. Um, I don't think it's, um, I don't think that's what they would call the cotton candy machine. To me, it sounds like something to do with maybe sewing. So water, clay, cotton candy, thread, I'm gonna say thread. I bet it goes to it now. Okay, thread. Answer. That's right. Let me scroll down. 
Uh, the spinning jenny was a hand-powered multi-spindle spinning machine that allowed the operator to spin multiple threads simultaneously. It used a row of spindles arranged on a sliding carriage moved by a hand crank. As the carriage moved, the spindles twisted the fibers, typically cotton or wool, into yarn. Wow. The spinning jenny was invented in 1764 by James Hargreaves, a British weaver and carpenter from Oswald Twistle, Lancashire, England. If I got that right. Next question. Okay, in Greek mythology, who was the mother of Achilles? Thetis, T H E T I S, Aethra, A E T H R A, Danae, D A N A E, and Alcmene, A L C M E N E. I've not heard of any of these really. The mother of Achilles. Um, my goodness. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm not for sure. I don't really know. Uh, I'm just going to say uh, the second one, Aethra. Answer, I keep forgetting to press it. No, it's Thetis. I never heard of that before. Um, so I just learned something. Achilles was the son of Peleus, a Greek king, and Thetis, a sea nymph or goddess. Zeus, the king of the gods, and Poseidon, god of the sea, had both fallen in love with Thetis and were rivals for her hand in marriage. Okay. What did the brand name LG originally stand for? Lee Group, Lucky Gold Star, Life's Good, Let's Grow. Lee Group, Lucky Gold Star, Life's Good, Let's Grow. I thought it was, I always thought it was life's good. No, that's wrong. So I, I was wrong. <laughs> it is Lucky Gold Star. Okay. Uh, in 1995, the inexpensive, poor quality Korean appliance and home electronic, electronics brand Lucky Gold Star became LG with the slogan, life's good. Okay, that was there's Okay, but it's not it, huh? By the 2005 Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, LG, along with its Korean competitor, Samsung, were the two appliance brands with the most innovative products on the convention floor. Well, I really thought it was life's good. Which planet is known as the ringed planet? Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus. Saturn, Jupiter, Neptune, Uranus. And I want to say Saturn. Answer. Right. Saturn, the ring planet, is the most distant of the five planets known to ancient stargazers. In 1610, Italian Galileo Galilei was the first astronomer to gaze at Saturn through a telescope. To his surprise, he saw a pair of objects on either side of the planet which he later drew as cup handles attached to the planet on each side. In 1659, Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens, Huygens announced that this was a ring encircling the planet. Okay. Two right, two wrong. Paprika is a spice with which vibrant color? Red, white, green, black. I love some smoked paprika. I really do. Especially on deviled eggs. Oh my gosh. Should have made some for Easter. Red, white, green, black. I say it's red. Right. Paprika is a spice made from the, from the dried ground ripened fruit pods of less pungent varieties of the capsicum anum species. It is, a, it is a mildly flavored and prized for its brilliant red color. Next. What is the traditional garnish? Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. The traditional garnish for a martini cocktail. Olive, blueberry, tangerine, cucumber. Well, I mean, 
No, some of that. Ugh. Olive, blueberry, tangerine, cucumber. It's it's olive. Yep. Uh, the martini is a cocktail made with gin and vermouth and garnished with an olive or a lemon twist. Over the years, martinis has become the best known mix, mixed alcoholic beverage. For right, two wrong. Which of these fishes expands itself to scare pet predators? Clownfish, jellyfish, boxfish, blowfish. Expands itself to scare predators. Clownfish, jellyfish, boxfish, blowfish. It's a blowfish, and I've caught one of those before. Not meaning to, but it, it just, you know, you never know what you're going to catch when you're fishing. You know, we were fishing in the ocean off a of pier. Like, well, we were at the bottom of the pier. And then there was people up above, too. Um... So, so, yeah, that's right. Uh, porcupine fish, also commonly called blowfish, can inflate their bodies by swallowing water or air, thereby becoming rounder. This increase in size, almost double vertically, reduces the range of potential predators to those with much bigger mouths. <laughs> Okay, where is the Cave of Swallows located? United States, Canada, Peru, Mexico. I've heard something about this before. United States, Canada, Peru, Mexico, but I could be wrong though. I'm going to say Mexico. Yeah, I've seen something on them. Okay, uh, the Cave of Swallows, also called the Cave of the Swallows, is an open-air pit cave in the municipality of Aquizamon, San Luis Potosi, Mexico. <laughs> the elliptical mouth on a slope of karst is 161 by 203 foot wide and is undercut around all its perimeter. Oh, we're just going to keep talking about stuff like that for some reason, how big it is and stuff. Okay, six right and two wrong. In which franchise did Elijah Wood have his first credited role? And is that him? I don't look much like him to me. Uh, the Lord of the Rings, Back to the Future, The Hobbit, The Matrix, Elijah Wood. Elijah Wood, I think. Now, The Lord of the Rings, Back to the Future, The Hobbit, The Matrix. I think it's The Hobbit, but it could be Lord of the Rings. It, no, what? Elijah Wood was in Back to the Future? Ah, oh, no, I don't know, I don't know that at all. Wow, okay, it's, it's Back to the Future. Elijah Wood is an American actor best known for portraying Frodo Baggins and Peter Jason's blockbuster Lord of the Rings, so it was Lord of the Rings anyway. Although his first credit was a small part in Back to the Future Part 2, Wood's first major film role was in the Barry Levinson historical family drama Avalon. Wow, okay. Radio Flyer. The Good Son. Wow, he co starred with McCaulkey Culkin in The Good Son. Well, okay, I didn't know that. That caught me off guard. Uh, what is the name of the island famous for its huge sculpted heads? And y'all have probably seen those at some point in time. Halloween Island, Christmas Island, Easter Island, Summer Island. Halloween Island, Christmas Island, Easter Island, Summer Island. If it was Halloween Island, that'd be pumpkin heads. You know? So that's a dead giveaway. It'd have to be pumpkin heads. Uh, I say Easter Island. Yep. Uh, eight. No, seven. No, okay, that's it. Uh, so, uh, so it is Easter Island. Easter Island is an island and special territory of Chile in the southeastern Pacific Ocean at the southeasternmost point of the Polynesian Triangle in Oceania. 
The island is most famous for its nearly 1,000 extant monumental statues called Moe, which were created by the early Rapu Nui people. In 1995, UNESCO named Easter Island World Her a World Heritage Site, with much of the island protected by the within Rapa Nui National Park. And those things, um, they they actually have found out that they're not just heads. Their the rest of the body is underground. It's it's a lot more. I don't know if they sunk after they did them or if they intended to do that on purpose. But it's a whole body underneath the ground is what I'm understanding about that. So anyway, I got seven right and three wrong today. I learned some stuff. That's always good. And uh, I hope you enjoyed trivia time in this morning's coffee break. If you did, I hope you'll press that like button. Also subscribe if you haven't already and share this out. And hit that so you get all my videos as soon as they come out. Everybody, I hope you have a great day. And check out, can't wait to plant my 2024 garden video today. Bye, everyone, and God bless.